And everything oh. behind us and beside us was taken out. I mean, gone. It started like a giant vacuum, man. It just took the roof right off, and I was just lucky I got all my kids in the closet. I looked out the window, and I saw a yellow lightning, and then it turned green, and then it was on us, and we were flipping through the air, and we hit a pine tree. A Haggerty Weather Special. A look back at the 1998 Central Florida tornado outbreak. Welcome to our look back of the 1998 Central Florida tornado outbreak. I'm Ryan Seagren. Over the next couple minutes, we're going to look back at an event that longtime Central Florida residents will remember well. We're going to sit down with the meteorologist in charge at WESH 2 that night and interview a current WESH meteorologist about his memories of the event. The Central Florida tornado outbreak occurred on the night of February 2, 1998 and the morning of February 3, 1998. It is the deadliest tornado outbreak in Florida history. 42 Floridians lost their lives as three F3 tornadoes roared through Volusia, Lake, Orange, and Seminole counties. These tornadoes are still the strongest in state history. That night, former West Shoe meteorologist Brad Nitz was in charge, and I sat down with him to discuss that night. Kind of going into that day, did you know there was a uh, severe weather risk or uh, risk for an outbreak? Yeah, so as we were going into that event, it was very clear that this was a, you know, kind of a textbook setup for uh, severe weather and specifically tornado outbreaks. So none of this came as a surprise, um, you know, as far as the, the overall threat. Um, you know, I don't know that any of us would have said ahead of time that uh, what ended up happening was likely to happen. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's once in a, hopefully once in a lifetime um, kind of kind of weather event, but the late night event, uh, eleven o'clock, midnight, one o'clock in the morning. What were you telling viewers that were awake to do? Um, once we got into the newscast, we started to go into the continuous coverage because we had the tornado warning um, up there um, in Volusia County first. One of the things that that I did that night that was for the first time, really the first time that I had done it, and the first time that um, we had done it at West and the other TV stations weren't doing it either was the storm track where you would, you know, you, you, you put the cursor down at the location of the tornado or a thunderstorm, and then you stretch it out knowing the speed and direction. And, you know, it seems very routine now, right? But it gives you the time of arrival of the storm in different locations. But um, it was a tool we had that we just really had never used. And it felt at the time, like this was uh, an opportunity that really made sense to use it. So I was using it, um, you know, for the first time and wasn't really an expert at it yet. Um, and so it was just kind of down and dirty, get the information out there, but it turned out to be a great tool. In retrospect, it was the right choice because being able to give people, you know, a little, little more precision on time and location, um, that was, that was very beneficial. I heard after the fact from folks that that, that was helpful. Um, a, I think it's a big ask for people, especially when you're getting late at night and people are going to bed or maybe they're watching in bed. You know, it's a big ask to say, you know, get out of bed and go to whatever your safe place is, like go down the hall into the closet and the bathroom. You know, people don't want to do that. But when you can you know, say the name of a, you know, a small town, a specific time of arrival, um, you can drill down to some neighborhood streets, and that tends to, um, you know, be effective, more effective in, you know, in the messaging and encouraging people to take action than just saying, you know, uh, Volusia County or Seminole County is under a tornado warning. That's a big area, and most of the people in that area aren't gonna be affected. But when you can drill down, um, that, you know, that's helpful. Um, and at the time, we're, of course, I was warning people about the threat for tornadoes. And it was, you know, kind of the textbook hook echo, very clear. This was a big supercell tornado. This wasn't you know, this wasn't one of those brief spin up tornadoes. It wasn't a rain wrapped, uh, you know, hard to detect tornado. This was um, just very clearly uh, the, the situation that could, could uh, spawn a, a powerful tornado. Um, in some ways that makes the messaging for me as a meteorologist a little bit easier. I mean, it's, um, it's very clear what we're talking about. It's very clear what the threats are. Um, the location very clear. Um, and so I was telling people what those threats were and where to go. Lowest level of your house, which of course in central Florida, virtually nobody has a basement, right? So it's ground floor, 
um, and then interior room away from windows. But specifically when we got late at night and past, past midnight, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tracking these tornadoes into populated areas and it's, you know, midnight, 1230, 1 a.m. and beyond, uh, knowing that a lot of these, these neighborhoods and these communities um, weren't being impacted when they went to bed and are now asleep, right? And you got to remember back in 1998, when this happened, nobody had apps, right? We didn't have smartphones. Um, people just really didn't have a good way to get warning information other than television and the NOAA weather radio, which is still available. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not, even back then, a lot of people didn't have them, certainly not like now everybody has a smartphone, right? And can get the push alert. Um, so I was telling people, you know, if you know somebody that lives in the path of this tornado, if you've got family or friends there, call them and wake them up. Really out of desperation and necessity to, to tell people, you know, try to get that warning to people that were asleep. As I, as I think back about that night, um, I remember very clearly as we started to get the, the tornado warnings in the northern part of the, the viewing area and in Volusia County specifically, um, as I was doing this continuous coverage, we got word of uh, a fatality, um, you know, kind of early on in the evening. And, um, you know, I just remember just kind of this, this sick to my stomach feeling that, that I got then. Um, and that was, that was the first time that I was on the air covering a tornado and there was, was a death. And, you know, that, you know, that hit me hard at the, at the time. And, and I, I could still remember that very clearly. And then, you know, then we started to get more reports of additional uh, fatalities. And it was just, it was devastating, you know, for me as a, a person as a human to, you know, be part of this, um, trying to get the message out and hearing about these deaths um, was really tough. It's tough even thinking back now all these years later about that. I mean, there was, uh, there were three EF, uh, there weren't EF, there were F3s back then, right? Mm -hmm. We hadn't done the EF scale, but there were three F3s. And um, yeah, that didn't, finding that out after the fact that they were rated F3s did not surprise me. I mean, uh, and, and, and I knew early on that night that this was a, a significant tornado outbreak. 42 people died on my watch. You know, I, I look at it that way too. Um, and, you know, in some ways it, it might've been, you know, the, the, <laughs> the biggest failure of, of my career in my life. If you, if you think of it that way, you know, could I, you know, could I have done more, um, could I have done a better job? Um, were there things that I could have said or warning that I could have given that might have made that death toll not 42, but 41 or some number that's less than that? Um, you know, I did at the time everything I knew to do and and did some some things that like the storm tracking with the ETAs that I've never done before that ended up being, you know, I, I think a retrospect a good choice. Um, but, you know, yeah, I think you, you know, you wouldn't be human if you didn't beat yourself up about it a little bit. And I certainly, certainly uh, did following that because, um, you know, it was there 42 people died. That's a, you know, there's a lot of families and friends that, you know, were, you know, lost a, a loved one. And, you know, here we are. 24 years later and and for those families and those friends that you know that hole is still there for them so you know it you know I think back you know a lot has happened in those years since right but um but I re that's one of those things in in my life that I I remember like yesterday that night current West Shoe meteorologist Eric Burris was watching green flashes outside his childhood home in unincorporated Winter Park I sat down with him to discuss his memories Take me back to middle school, you, you were looking out your bedroom window. What do you see? So, you know, it was, it was one of those nights where you knew that there were going to be some storms and uh, I was up late and, um, you know, to, to listen to the rain out the window, that's how much of a nerd, right? 
But, um, you know, watching TV, you're watching the weather people cover these nasty storms. And at, at the time I lived with a view kind of looking off towards Sanford. And I remember as they were tracking a possible tornado on TV, looking out my window and off in the distance, seeing those green flashes, which of course, um, those are the transformers uh, basically exploding. And uh, so in that moment, I started to recognize this was an actual tornado within an eye shot of my bedroom. And truth be told, it, that was probably the first time in my life that I realized I'm not that far from this and it's a real thing. And then, of course, you know, you just kind of start going through your mind. Am I safe? Are those people safe? This is bad. You know, you just start playing these things in your head. How far were you from the tornado? 10, 15 miles. But again, these power flashes were so bright because it was such a powerful tornado. They took over the sky. You know, seeing lightning in the distance lights up the sky, but lightning's not green, you know? And so when you see green lightning, it's probably not lightning. Are you watching TV and um, did, did watching TV help shape who you became? You, yes. Um, I, I always credit my entire career was because I was afraid of the weather. And in those times of bad weather, there was the weather guy on TV. So for example, in 98, I was flipping between channels, uh, but I remember watching Marty Stebbins on channel two covering it. And then I remember seeing Brad Nitz coming in and covering it. And the, the striking thing about it, and I was, you know, I was flipping through the other stations too, but the striking thing about it is when you've got, I mean, I was a middle schooler and seeing green flashes out my window, I was scared, right? But I got immense comfort from listening to somebody on TV who calmly, patiently just went through using the equipment. They, they let me know when the storm approached me. They let people in the path of destruction know that way you could protect yourself as best as possible. So were you able to go look at the damage after the tornadoes and what do you see? So I, I remember going to my father's house when my parents weren't together. And I remember right, right after going to my father's house and he was in Volusia County at the time and driving on the 417 and just past the toll plaza in Sanford, there was a clearing because that's where one of the tornadoes had gone through. And that, when, when you weren't expecting to see it, and there it was like a bulldozer went through and made a clearing. And as soon as I saw that, I immediately asked my parents the next week after the emergency crews had kind of quieted down, can we go and look um, in the winter garden area down at, near the Ponderosa RV park? You know, can we look at some of this damage? Uh, and, and they said, yes, once the emergency crews got out of there and they kind of cleaned the debris out of the streets, you know, we didn't want to be a hamper. Uh, but it was all because on the 417, I had seen that unexpected clearing and it, I mean, that threw me, right? And then to go down and, and Winter Garden was incredible, but Kissimmee still today sticks with me. I remember pulling up to a shopping center that had just been obliterated and then driving around and just... That was the first time that I'd ever experienced that, right? I remember saying to my stepfather, how could anybody make it through? And he looked right at me and in a somber tone said, there were a lot of people that didn't. I mean, and you see, and you, you can't help but be overcome by what that, what that night was for the people that survived, knowing that so many didn't. The first F3 tornado tore through Winter Garden and ended near Lockhart. That same storm later spawned a second F3 of the night, starting near Longwood and ending near St. John's River, River on the border of Seminole and Volusia County. It killed 13 and caused $31 million in damage, while also damaging buildings at the Orlando Sanford Airport. The final F3 of the night and the deadliest tornado tore through Kissimmee and Lake Mary Jane. This tornado killed 25 people injured another 150 and caused $55 million in damage. There were also two F2 
and one, three F1 tornadoes in Central Florida that night. With all outbreaks and severe weather events, it is of the utmost importance to have ways to receive warnings. Oviedo has an outdoor warning siren system, which is great, but they are not meant to be heard inside and they have been known to fail. It is essential to have a quick way to get warnings. The best way to get warnings is to know a weather radio, like this. It sounds off an audible warning when there is a warning issued anywhere in the county and gives life-saving information. FEMA and the American Red Cross also have great apps to warn you. Having multiple ways to receive warnings can save your life the next time severe weather moves through Central Florida. And the next time there is severe weather or any type of weather, trust Haggerty Weather to give you the first heads up.